the 23rd of April. It's uh, 2023. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the live show. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. You can call in at 709-589-4406 or text me. You're having a good night. I uh, hope you had a great weekend. The species, those mammals, humanity. It is stunning. What do we got going on here? Might have to cancel one of the shows. We're streaming to two sites as we talk. And we're going to get into a new cycle here in a moment. When we get a chance here, we're going to cover the last 24 hours to get rid of the music. And I put a link in the description for you. We got a poll for everybody tonight. We're going to bring up here. Okay, we're going to cancel the cancel the stream on because it doesn't matter. We're stuttering, right? We'll cancel a rumble because we're coming over there permanently starting tomorrow. My apologies to everybody on rumble. We should be okay in a moment here for anybody that's trying to understand what's going on. My apologies. We're going to jump into a new cycle when the stream stabilizes. Looks like we had a few issues. That'll come back in a second. We should be back any second. I just cancelled one of the streams. My apologies to everybody. Okay, so we just canceled that stream. That's okay. Um, Rumble, but that's where we're going to start tomorrow night. We won't be streaming to YouTube no more. And so I'll post a little video each night. I'll post a video each night um, before I go live at Rumble with a link to the live show. should be running good now. Everything looks normal on my end. My apologies to everybody. State secret bill now. This is 2013. Japan's public stunned as citizens could face years in prison with a state secret bill meant to suppress Fukushima. The Japan's prime uh, princess son, no one died at Fukushima. No one got injured from Fukushima. No one. No one is worried about radiation. Uh, first off, there was 865,000 extra cancers, cancers in 2012. There was, in just one month, there was almost 14,000 extra people died from heart attacks compared to the same month of the year before. There were 7.7 .7 more serious cancers that showed up. Uh, and cardiac diseases was up by 14.6%. Now cancer, of course, 865,000 extra cancers in one year. That's catastrophic. Uh, cancer is just one of 1,800 diseases that will manifest. It's 
So to claim no one died, no one got injured, it was, it was quite the low blow. X-ray-like images show radioactive contamination spread to leaves in the grass collection from Fukushima to Tokyo. Radiation levels on the U.S. West Coast spiked to over a million times normal after Fukushima. And this was the infamous 137 that they're actually talking about. This is an absurd statistic, by the way. And we can quantify that with studies that have already been done on this coastline. So we're going to get into the new cycle right here, right now. And just bear with me. Okay, so we're we're back to normal. So nuclear fusion will not be regulated the same way as nuclear fission. It's a big win for the fission industry. Well, it doesn't matter because there is no fission industry. There is no fusion reactors. There's not going to be any fusion reactors. They have been spinning the same narrative for five decades, for over 50 years. They're working on the blueprints from 1904. They don't have anybody mathematical alive and in the industries that could solve their issues cause they're, or come up with another way of doing it. So they're working on the original blueprint, uh, you know, the theory of nu nuclear, or rather the theory of fusion from 1904 from the original paper. Same as the small modular reactors are based on the same designs as the large reactors and their large reactors on their own. So they show you one person surrounded by a bunch of metal. Again, these are fables. They've got no prospect of a fusion reactor and they're going to produce so much um, tritium on its own. It's absurd. It's, it's absurd. The numbers we're talking about. I just put a link in the description for you to my new site at Rumble. And you need to put that in your bookmark because that's where I'm going to be streaming from now on. This is the last show on YouTube. You piece of shit YouTube. The traitorous YouTube. Commonwealth Fusion System, a startup from MIT, of course. MIT got their hand in all of these technologies. There's always a startup from MIT. They've been promoting nuclear for over 90 years and proud of it. Uh, S&P looks at mini nuclear reactors for industries. Now, the, the problem is we've been censored to the point where I'm almost extinct myself, right? We can't carry on the research. We can't grow the operation. They have uh, throttled us everywhere and vilified and demonized me from the get-go. They took down my site a couple of years ago with 24,000 subscribers. I had 24,200 subscribers for four years straight and never lost one, never gained one. So you can imagine what they've been up to for the last six years. And it's heartbreaking really because I'm used to doing YouTube. It's easy for me. Right now I gotta work like a dog. I did do a stream today and that worked out fine. Uh, I've been trying for months to figure it out, but they just changed everything because they went on the stock market, and so they changed everything. You no longer got to pay $600 to get a high bandwidth, right? Many plants in the country were nearing the end of their expected useful life of 40 years. Tax incentives, so back to this story. 
S&P looks at many nuclear reactors. Well, there is no many nuclear reactors. Um, again, right, there's no such thing as a small modular reactor. So putting your eggs in a basket of something that don't exist doesn't even make any sense. Why wouldn't you? If you're going to use small modular reactors, you might as well use geothermal. Geothermal is obsolete technology. It's completely safe. You can put it right in the city, in the middle of the city. You can't hurt anybody. There's no emissions. Well, water. Japan asks EU to lift restrictions put on exports. They were put on exports after Fukushima. This was meltdowns. This is not disasters. These are catastrophic events. Right? The, this is to call it a disaster instead of what it is, uh, nuclear wasteland, nuclear meltdowns, is their biggest flaw. They're destroying the world by not addressing the issue. There's no incentive to fix the issue because you keep pretending there's no issue. They have a farm minister, farm minister, not academics, not scientists, not universities, not that that matters, they're perpetual lawyers too. But a farm minister is making these decisions. Asked his European Union counterpart to lift lethal food restrictions for exports following Fukushima nuclear disaster, nuclear meltdowns, radioactive fallout. To swiftly remove restrictions on products such as seafood and wild mushrooms. Wild mushrooms from the nuclear wasteland. Mushrooms, of course, are the biggest bioaccumulators of radiation. Multiple reactor meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi Power Station. Multiple reactor meltdowns. It's very unusual to see him say those words, reactor meltdowns, with an S. That's extraordinary. Uh, Freeland says Ottawa's offer to the public sector workers is a fair one, but won't burden taxpayers in Canada. Now, why is this important? So Canada public sector workers are gone on strike, which includes our nuclear power plants here in Canada. So speaking of reporters, she took the reporters to the nuclear disease factory in Pickering, Ontario, and have nuclear disease factory employees stood up behind her. Man, that tells you how bad Canada actually is. That she thinks there's nothing wrong with that. And it's uh, from the Canadian propaganda machine, CBC. And they call it the Minority Report. Remember the uh, movie Minority Report? Governor signs a bill increasing small nuclear reactor capacity. Governor signs a bill increasing small nuclear reactor capacity, but they don't actually exist. They don't even exist. But they signed a bill to increase the capacity of a capacity that doesn't exist. And then what they they changed the definition to 470 megawatts electricity from the current 350 megawatt. Like 350 megawatt reactor is not a small modular reactor. A 470 megawatt reactor is not a small modular reactor or even close to it. Right, so they just, typical in nuclear industry, they come out originally and tell you something about the nuclear industry and you find out it's nothing but lies and more lies and, and dangerous lethal lies. <coughs> Letter to the editor, let's cover at-risk nuclear plant with a spiritual dome. <coughs> so they want people to pray to create 
a metaphorical dome over Zapoporia's disease factory, which is surrounded by farms, I might add. There's 3,000 workers at this disease factory in Ukraine. It's a big disease factory, right? Uh, looks like I missed a headline of that story. That one right there. That was about San Ofre nuclear power plant. They were talking about 3.6 million pounds of nuclear waste of San Ofre's nuclear disaster. And what they want to do is reclaim, they want to turn it into mixed oxide fuel. So they're talking about mixed oxide fuel, like they say in France and Japan and Russia. Well, it's illegal in America for because it creates so much pollution. skip through that story because I'm uh, we don't have the headline we'll save it for the next show I guess because that was a big story it doesn't work without the headline unfortunately maybe I can bring it up on the external maybe uh, US MOX facility contract was terminated so this I went back to 2018 to the Savannah River site so that's part of the last story, where this was con this was terminated in 2022. And so they were going to build a mixed oxide facility already in the United States recently. So why did another company just show up and claiming that they're going to do it, a private company? When the, the American government spent an absurd amount of money in Savannah River. And it flopped, right? Um, this was updated later, a year later for some reason. There was 9 million pieces of uninstalled equipment. 9 million pieces. So what the hell is going on? Thank goodness they didn't go ahead and build a facility, right? Uh, but they had 9 million pieces of uninstalled equipment when they closed down. Well, 90% of the money is stolen by the administration that's working at them sites. So let's move on to the next story, because I can't cover that story because we don't even have the headline for the original one. We'll just touch on it. Anyway, there's another company. I can probably touch on it a bit better than that. There's another company that wants to start another mixed oxide. And so they're trying to say that because Germany and France or Russia and France and Japan is making mixed oxide fuel, America should too. And they should use the fuel at these reactor sites like Diablo Canyon and places like that. He says... A new company is asserting the U.S. never actually banned mixed oxide fuel production. And uh, nuclear regulatory agencies agreed to that statement, by the way. Policy in the U.S. enables recycling on a commercial scale. Everett Redmond, senior director for fuel affairs for Oklo, during a recent panel discussion with the American Nuclear Society. At a recent panel, con well, they were going to do it, right? Um, I think they started building it in 2004 at Savannah River, so it canceled it in 2022 or something. Nine million pieces left over that was uninstalled. 
9 million pieces. That blows me away, by the way. He said, from our perspective, this private company that's obviously connected, recycling absolutely is doable in the U.S. Yeah, you can, you, you can do recycling in the U.S., you shouldn't. It's illegal for a specific reason. It was it was not done rather for a specific reason. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission determined twenty twenty one the current regulations TCFR Part fifty are adequate to license a reprocessing facility, noting that some exemptions for regulatory requirement may be needed Pacific, but the rubber stamp NRC spokesperson so the webinar speaker was correct. New regulations are not required. Ain't that, ain't that an interesting statement? The plan itself is proprietary, so riffraffs like us can't see it. So we can't see it. Oklahoma, by the way, is a nuclear startup. We covered it a few times. It started about two years ago. It's working on next generation reactors. The, this fabled small modular reactors can't work without um, enriched uranium fuel, weapons grade fuel. That's their little trick, right? To, to get extra power or, or a lot of power out of it is to use. And now, so this fuel is already two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. Two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. And so I put a link again in the description that is to the new site we're going to start streaming from tomorrow due to ridiculous absurd restrictions placed upon us. We got a poll, should Japan allow independent testing and counting of the tanks? Because they said they got a thousand tanks, we only counted 750 of its nuclear radioactive water tanks. Now the reality of it is if you fill the tanks up, there's so much radiation there's so much radiation that you can't build another tank if you fill up one of the tanks. David Victor, professor of U.S., which means scumbag, obviously, at UC San Diego School of Global Policy and Strategy and chair the San Onfre Community Engagement Panel Voluntary Groups that advises Southern California Edison on San Onfre decommissioning, cautioned us not to get too excited. This is French railway tracks where the police got to protect the uh, trains carrying nuclear fuel. You see, in the train is carrying these uh, 100,000 pound cast on the back of the trains. Victor said, but we need a solution for civilian spent nuclear fuel because they do make mixed oxide with, um, with the National Laboratories fuel, right, because they're exempt, because they're the government themselves, see? So they're better than everybody. Concerns about reprocessing nuclear fuel leading to nuclear weapons proliferation. No, the, the emissions from the reclamation process, from taking fuel rods and weapons and reclaiming the hot particles, the hot uranium, plutonium, curium products, it, the releases are prolific, so much so that between La Hague and France reprocessing facility and Americans or United Kingdom's Sellafield and Donneray reprocessing sites have effectively contaminated the Atlantic and the Arctic and the European countries in between. By the way, at San Ofre, all the tanks are vented into the environment. There is no containment. Uh, the U.S. Department of Energy continues effort to find both temporary permanent storage. Well, they haven't even tried. This is 80 years gone by. The problem with the fuel is it's splitting the atoms into the environment. 
These are catastrophic, but everything would replicate in cells. U.S. Mox facility contract terminated. So I dug up that story because it was just a couple of years ago, or last year, that they, they closed the deal completely on Savannah River. And Savannah River has over 9,000, 9 million pieces of uninstalled equipment left. So the question is, why didn't they finish it? And why is a new one, private corporation, the property showing up? For sure, 12 years on, again, the propaganda from the industry is just, it's relentless, isn't it? They said hydrogen built up in number one, number three reactor buildings and led to led them to explode. The hydrogen build up is caused by the meltdown itself. So it melted down. That's why you ended up with the hydrogen. You can't the zirconium claddings get become exposed. If they're not underwater, they'll catch fire. They'll burn at about eighteen hundred degrees. And then inside of these tubes are the pellets, so-called pellets, of uranium plutonium. And so they'll burn at around 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. 9,000 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures. Uh, the chain of accidents led to a massive amount of radiation. Uh, it covered the whole planet in 16 days. The call of the massive amount, again, right, just to, as if it doesn't matter, as if it's, okay, it was a massive amount, but as if that's where it's, it doesn't stop there. The, the equation is is horrific. I'll show you Francis' model of 16 to 20 days. When this stops, it's around 16, 20 days. Well, this one is 16 days, I believe. Well, this is... At 60 days, or 16 days, most of the planet right now is 16 days. Right there is 16 days. After... Because the 15th, the last reactor is detonated. Now, some of the reactors detonated a week after. But let's just say the first five days the reactors had all detonated once or twice. So, say 20 days, the whole planet's covered in radioactive fallout. Saying that it released a massive amount of information or radiation doesn't do it justice. Decommissioning works expected to take 40 years. You can't decommission um, a normal reactor in 60 years. So how can you decommission destroyed facility with four reactors and eight fuel pools in 40 years, right? Or even in the same time frame. The effort is now moving into the second phase and officials are considering the timing of the removal of fuel debris from the reactors. The biggest hurdle is removing the molten nuclear fuel and structural elements that constitute the debris inside the reactors. Robots have been tested inside of each nuclear reactor's containment vessel. Again, there is no reactor or containment vessels in these reactors. The I'll show you reactor three and four so you can kind of wrap your mind around what I mean by that. There is no building left, right? This is the problem. We, the whole planet is is dying because we refuse to acknowledge what's happening.
So reactor three, reactor four, these are completely destroyed. The containment's at the top of the buildings, which were 190 feet tall. There is no top, there is no building. Typical plans to carry a small scale test to assess the feasibility of number two reactor. Uh, number two burned continuously for several days. There, there is no reactor. It did. It, it didn't blow the, the building apart like reactor three and four, but reactor one did, reactor three and reactor four were visibly destroyed. Reactor two went China syndrome down into the earth and its fuel pools. And so now they're pretended to get the fuel at a reactor four in 2013 and 14, pretended to get the fuel at a reactor three, 2020 and 21. Now they're going to pretend they're going to get the fuel out of reactor two. Uh, and so where do we draw the line, really? Where do we draw the line? Local officials are worried about possible damage to the reputation according to the media. Reputational damage. The, the damage was immediate worldwide. But this is not a game, right? This is not a game. They conduct the thorough test of radioactive products and in food, including rice harvested, harvested from 10 municipalities around a disease factory, which is Fukushima. Ten, ten different areas. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags of radiation from a fraction of the prefecture, 3% of the prefecture. So sweeping roofs and walls of buildings don't displace radiation. It's a nuclear wasteland. So removing earth and plants and covering it with soil and sweeping the roofs and the walls of the buildings is not decommissioning. It's the opposite. It's idiotic to suggest that somehow or another that mitigates or appropriates the affected areas. So claiming one millisiever a year is not how you measure radioactive fallout. You measure it in Beckles, atomic decays, at the physical atoms that you're going to breathe in. Millisievers is just energy, which is bad enough. And when you got a lot of radioactive fallout, you definitely got energy, but you can't quantify the radioactive fallout by measuring it in microsievers or millisieverts. It's the opposite. You do that to bury the truth, to hide the reality, to misrepresent what has happened. I call it call it on rubble. And I'm going to put a link here each night to a little video before I go live on Rumble. And, uh, you know, what am I supposed to do? How do we tell this story with the censorship that's on YouTube and the threat constantly of taking my site down? And I have to try. If I don't try, then I don't, I shouldn't be here in the first place, right? But I mean, it was so hard to find a spot that we can afford to stream on. The Japanese government started decommissioning work in Fukushima Prefecture soon after the accident, removing surface earth, washing roads and roofs, and cutting down greenery is not how you decommission. That's not how it's done. Bags of waste were piled high in temporary storage that dotted through the prefecture. Originally, it was 150,000 places. In some instances, the bags were temporarily stored in school grounds and parks and parking lots and even the gardens of private homes. The work was conducted at 44 of 59 municipalities and conducted in zones designated as difficult to return. Difficult to, AKA nuclear wasteland. So now they got pink charts, which I find fascinating that they're using pink 
Because that, that, that is fascinating, right? That they done that. Much of the radioactive waste has been sent to an interim storage facility covering 1,600 hectares, straddling the towns of Akuma, which is north, and Futabar, which is south. And these are joined on to the nuclear site itself. These are nuclear, abandoned nuclear wastelands where they never stop growing food and shipping it worldwide to murder you and your loved ones and unsuspecting consumers. It's truly despicable, no matter how you look at it. Inside the facility, plants and combustible materials are turned into ash. So you can't destroy radiation by putting it in an incinerator. All you're going to do is liberate the radiation back into the environment. Uh, st soil, stones, and gravel are removed and stored elsewhere. So they, they're burning radioactive materials in order to, so they don't have 30 million, now they have 20 million or 10 million, right? One ton bags of radiation. And each kilogram of this stuff is a, the animosity equivalent of a dirty bomb. So this is our last show on YouTube. I just put a link in the description so you can go to my new site on Rumble. Rumble says they don't censor anybody. Rumble says there's no can cancel culture. Rumble monitorizes the videos and pays you a bigger percentage than what YouTube would do. So I'm already pre-approved for everything. The site is set up. Um, but up until uh, recently, you had to pay a lot of money to stream on that site. Now you don't have to anymore. So you can stream in very high quality. And there's the chat room is still going to be there. The chats will be there after. There's the uh, comment sections. Everything is very similar to YouTube. i done a stream this afternoon and... It was a private stream that I removed, but everything looked, when I watched it after, everything looked normal. It's a little bit getting used to, and but it's not so much uh, earning money on Rumble. It's about reaching an audience, warning the planet and alerting the world that we need, we need to control this industry, period. We need to, to stomp down on this... Um, destructive industry known as nuclear and it's very unsettling that I have to go somewhere else I won't be forgiven the people that done it to me forever the ministry experimented with using the soil to elevate land and for growing vegetables in locations within Fukushima so to use soil from nuclear cleanup nuclear waste for growing vegetables in location in the nuclear wasteland itself. The public is still skeptical. The journalists are not. They wrote the story to try to sell it to you. The dumping nears Korea worries about the health hazards of Fukushima wastewater. Well, it's already happened over and over and over. The emissions were airborne from uh, day two for and forever and ever and ever. The plumes, this is only a 20-day radioactive faller plume there. You can imagine what it's like after 12 years of constant emissions, continuous plumes. Head of the Environmental Subcommittee of the Haslam Co-op in South Korea. The discharge of contaminated water from Fukushima is a disaster. Well, they, they haven't stopped discharging it. So why are 
the experts in South Korea talking like it's it's in the future instead of what's already happened. Because that's the game, right? The game is to convince you that it's never happened and that it might happen. And so worry about what might happen, not worry about what has already happened. That should terrify you that they're willing constantly, consistently um, talking in that language. Japan's decision to dump Fukushima water is based on biased data, argues a scientist. There was a couple of interesting points. Again, this is meant to lead you into thinking it might happen instead of that it's the fact that it's already happened. And what I mean by that is, if you believe the people there are at the top of the building to your left that don't exist, then you're not being realistic, right? Because the people to the right are trying to convince you that they're at the top of reactor four to your left. Which is the same thing as they're trying to do with this story like that, right? It's the same thing. Uh, claiming there's a thousand tanks. Now we got a poll tonight. Should Japan allow independent testing and counting of its nuclear radioactive water tanks? You have 43 votes is 100%. hundred percent. For example, the panel pointed out that the measurements for tellurium-127, a radionuclear with only a 9.4 hour half-life, there's 10 half-lives, range from hundreds of thousands to tens of billions of becquerels per liter in their discharges. Uh, now, that shouldn't exist because the meltdowns were 12 years ago and this has a half life of, of less than four days or a lifespan of less than four days total so basically a hundred hours and it's gone to lead right because it decays to a stable a stable um, decay after 9.4 hours but there's 10 decays altogether but they, they, each of them are going to decay to a stable. So that disappears after 100 hours, after four days, basically. So how can there be billions of Beckwells, tens of billions per liter, when it shouldn't, the only way it can exist if there's non growing ongoing criticality? It's very confusing that that showed up. The scientists, of course, recommended the wastewater, aka the nuclear contaminated water, be stored a long time to reduce its radioactivity level. This is what the game is, I think, is to, to, to allegedly give in and say, okay, well, we're not going to dump it into the ocean when. Uh, they got everybody hyped up, and then the whole world will go on. Thank God Japan almost polluted the Pacific instead of Japan not only polluted the Pacific, they irradiated the entire planet with constant massive plumes of radioactive fallout. So, right, and this is the game that they're playing. I think so. That's what they're up to anyway. Very dangerous because this has already happened. This is, uh, yesterday was Earth Day, which has been around since 1970, I believe. And there are documentaries to watch for Earth Day. Yeah, like who? I don't know anybody out there that's honest. That's the scariest thing about the whole story is don't actually know anybody out there in um, Hollywood or anywhere else that's actually honest about this subject. Pension fund shuns a size while seeing major blow to Britain's nuclear ambitions again. It's not the first time we've seen. It's really interesting how they're going after all the big pension funds. 
the pension funds. The pension funds. Canada done a similar thing. Canada invested after Fukushima immediately invested the Canadian pension in India's uranium. So there's no way to blow the whistle, right? Or Canadians would have lost their pensions. Asset managers extremely skeptical about nuclear push despite the project's sustainable status, which is a fake status, right? It's a totally fabricated status. It's a total fabricated status. I'm going to post a link in the description of my new site on Rumble. That's where we're going to stream from now on starting tomorrow effectively at the same time every night I'll put a, a little video out on my YouTube channel to direct people over there I hope it works out all we can do is try our best uh, obviously YouTube has me censored beyond the point of being able to grow or acquire a real audience or warn the planet rather of a catastrophic event so big investment funds have turned their backs multiple different uh, pension funds which cracks me up on the evilness of this industry despite introducing new funding models and classifying it as green the government has struggled to persuade skeptical pension uh, pension funds and asset managers to get behind size we'll see Britain's biggest money manager, 1.3 trillion of assets, announced it will have no bearings on its opposition to large nuclear energy schemes as it is focused on supporting alternatives like wind and solar, but should be storage. And Britain does have water battery storage for quite a few uh, decades going on down there, so they're quite familiar with it. There was ongoing debate over the issue due to environmental concerns around nuclear waste, and so they ruled it out. Previously, BT pension schemes and NatWest have told campaign groups, stop size, we'll see, they will not back the project. A senior industry source told The Telegraph that the company would struggle to find backers for size, we'll see, because many asset managers remained extremely skeptical they have a track record for going massively over budget and over schedule the so Bruce leaders are heading to Finland for a nuclear waste tour but they don't have a nuclear waste repository in Finland they have they're digging a hole in the ground but they don't have it they don't have any waste under and Finland only has 6,000 tons, which is still a lot, don't get me wrong. Finland has 6,000 tons. Canada has 106,000 tons. So it's a hell of a lot more. The criteria is infinitely different. Right, the criteria is completely different. So sending over people, by the way, the people that they're sending over don't know anything about nuclear. These are people from the local communities that are getting kickbacks. These are people they need to win over, basically. Not people that know nuclear. Not people that understand the subject whatsoever. These are just local people in an isolated community. They're getting a tickets and first-class service to fly to Finland and come back and tell everybody how great it is to sell the fable. But they also want to cause a divide because they don't want it to happen. This is why they give a percentage of the, com of the communities millions of dollars to cause a divide, and then they're going to have a referendum. And the referendum has to go through multiple stages. The community got a vote on the plan, and so does Ojibwe nations. And there's also a community in northern Ontario still vying to host it. So in other words, they got enough to void. They're 18 years after getting $24 billion. They've done nothing only 
employed themselves for 18 years and accomplished nothing, even if there was a vote of yes with the referendum, it's going to take them 20 years to get it ready, and it'll take another 60 to 80 years to put the waste in it. So their children's and their children's could have jobs tricking the Canadians and poisoning everybody in between. Lunatic, disgusting, despicable, ultra, ultra safe nuclear. These, these are degenerate scums. These are absurdly degenerate scumbags, ultra safe nuclear. These are revolting scum that we've dealt with many times. You gotta put safe everywhere. Which do, and they're in Seattle. I've had dealings with them over the last couple of years. These are scumbags. They've called me up and they stalked me on a number of occasions. But these these are actually revolting scumbags. And why would you use the micro nuclear reactors, which by the way, is going to be mixed oxide uh, weapons grade fuel, rather than geothermal? Why would you use reactors, mi what so called micro reactors? You can do the geothermal for half the price with no threat to humanity. So why not do that? Uh, Hawaii, they got a useful idiot in Hawaii. says nuclear power should be considered for Hawaii. Perhaps now is the time for Jim Kelly of Hawaii's Electric Depressed Department of Energy to spend more research and development and the only really viable clean energy resource, instead of wasting time and money on intermittent sources like solar and wind turbines. Well, Hawaii is perfect for geothermal. It's literally a perfect spot for geothermal. It's perfect. The, once you put fuel in a reactor fuel pool, then it's hemorrhaging atoms into your environment all day, every day. Everybody's going to get poisoned. And does Hawaii have enough farmland to support a nuclear plant? Because they only build them in farmlands so they can poison the food at the same time, right? Why, I, 3.5 gigawatt nuclear power by 2030 without diligently preparing national energy policy or looking at some alternative, better solutions. And so they talk about small modular reactors were suggested. And this is all posturing. Again, they don't even exist. And you see it with the geothermal plants where communities are holding a press conference because they want to be part of the, G of the fusion energy, but there is no fusion energy. They get sucked into the, the propaganda. And then they start destroying their community so they can get a kickback. Uh, Leta participated in hearing to promote the use of nuclear energy. This is Senator, uh, the District of Ohio, Congressman Robert E. Leta. Legislation, uh, Nuclear Fuel Security Act. Well, this is about mixed oxide fuel again. Enrichment conversion. So enrichment is mixed oxide fuel. And again, they're talking about, the only reason they're talking about enrichment is the for small modular reactors. So it's really interesting to see all of this propaganda because it's a money grab, I guess, or something. And so the HALU fuel, which is what they're talking about there, for Advanced Nuclear Reactor Demonstration Project, and you got to hate the sound of that. Who, where are they going to put that to? In Ohio. Nuclear... Um, Again, this is propaganda. Nuclear is the safest low carbon source of electric power. Every time I see that, and you see it a lot, right? This is um, Belarus, I believe, or Belgium. Thanks to nuclear weapons, we haven't had a hot global war for over 80 years, he said. Well, that, that's nonsense. All the fuel pool, uh, fuel pools are a nuclear war. Uh, nuclear weapons testing was a nuclear war. This is a 40-day model of radioactive fallout uh, by NOAA, by America's government. 
this is based on a flawed input of just venting. It's not based on the actual nuclear meltdowns. Covering the planet in 40 days. That's a war. When uh, the Soviet Union detonated their biggest weapon, which was 50 megatons, they estimated that was equal to 3,800 Hiroshima or Nagasaki bombs going off at the same time. 3,800. That's a nuclear war, see? Castle Bravo was a, in uh, the Bikini Atolls, was equal to 1,000 Nagasaki bombs going off at the same time. That's a nuclear war. That's equal to two countries detonating 500 Nagasaki bombs each at the same time. That's a nuclear war. And so it doesn't have to be these big megatons, by the way, to be a nu the animosity equivalent of a nuclear war. All nuclear testing was a nuclear war. It's the same bombs, the same radioactive fallout, right? So we covered this a little bit. New heavy uranium isotope was made, uranium-241. It's the second heaviest isotope of the uranium element. All the other isotopes are created from uranium. 235, like all the plutonium, cesium, uranium, am or americium, neptunium, strontium, the thousand fission products are created from the uranium 235 itself. Uh, 149 neutrons to go along with the element 92 protons is 241. I believe it's got a short half-life and I covered that the last time I dug it up I can't remember off the top of my head so four new elements complete the seventh row of the periodic table and these were discovered about a decade ago uh, there was some controversy with uh, 117 I think we'll get to it in a minute. Where somebody had to resign. Now apparently, no, 118. Researchers first claimed to have created the heaviest known element, number 118, in 1999 at Berkeley, I think. But the data is that study turned out to be fabricated. Yeah, 118. Lawrence Berkeley, that's right. When other scientists tried to replicate the experiment, they failed, and they didn't want to... Berkeley didn't name the person, but other people did. Although uh, Ninoff's name appears on the retraction, he apparently refused to sign off on it, which is, I guess is not unusual if you're trying to keep your credibility. Fusion power key to Earth's survival, says Bill Nye in an exclusive interview. Wow, he's he'll what what he's a used car salesman for Discovery Channel, basically, and he'll lie to you no matter what it is. He don't care. He's got the audience of the most vulnerable of society. His job is to penetrate the, the children, so to speak, uh, disgusting as that sounds, and um, but that's what he does for a living. Bill Nye, the creepy guy, talks about what he would get. Our planet for Earth Day, and evidence-based optimism in light of his latest show, The End Is Nigh. And he would call, he would get him the ultimate gift. He said fusion energy, but the ultimate gift is not fusion energy. The ultimate gift is geothermal it's under everybody's feet worldwide. So he put again. We've seen him do this many, many times to promote nuclear, small modular reactors, and everything else. Now he's promoting the fusion. He's 100% dangerous, scarily dangerous puppet. And he don't care what dies as long as he gets his paycheck, right? Out of control, now defunct NASA satellite will smash into Earth. But they're not going to tell you where because it's NASA. 
I uh, put a link up there to our new site we'll be streaming from starting tomorrow night at the same time as normal in the comments section for everybody again. And I'll be posting a video tomorrow evening. Once I do the show preamble for Rumble, I'll be posting a little video with a link. And um, so you can find it. And I, I think you'll find it's fine. We've got to try to reach out to the world. We have been throttled on YouTube, and uh, the world is sleepwalking into a disaster that we have to break this paradigm. And, of course, it's absurd amount of work for me to change sites, and unfortunately, that's the moral thing to do. From Darkness to Light, 23rd IPP NW World Congress. At the International Physicians for Prevention of Nuclear War, which is uh, a spin-off from you got the youth panels, the whole nine yards. Time of the climate crisis, which is caused by 80 years of emissions from nuclear industries worldwide. So they were closely with the U.S. affiliate, the Physicians for Social Responsibility, which is Helen Callicott's little monster, demonic demon, from 1978. She took over the original one, relabeled it as a new company. And she has something like 23,000 physicians signed on to it. And they put their advertisement out the very day after Three Mile Island, so it was the perfect time to be advertising, right? And she's wrote 14 anti-nuclear books. 14 anti-nuclear books. She's done thousands of lectures and presentations and interviews combined. But she has some seriously dark secrets. We'll play a clip of it so you can kind of comprehend Hopefully, the danger of that story. So I'm going to play this first one. Now, sh I got pictures put in it, which uh, she's doing an interview with Talking Stick TV, which was one of my favorite sites about a decade ago. Uh, building 4 is also similarly fragile and it's got a huge cooling pool on top with all its fuel rods but they have been removing them uh, and it's been a very delicate procedure and they've removed almost all so if that collapse now I think it would probably be okay. Me okay so she was asked does reactor 4 fuel pool which you can see the building to the left so that building to the left doesn't exist. It's gone. It's supposed to be 190 feet high. The fuel pool would be at the top of it. And it would look like that over there. This is what the building actually looks like. She was doing a radio. Now, she's done this uh, several hundred times in interviews where she told the same lie. Uh, she was asked in a radio interview, does Reactor 4 really look like that? Or does it look like this? And her response uh, was just terrifying. Because she says... They're very tidy people. Let me ask you this. Uh, you've said that uh, if the spent fuel pool in number four collapses, that you would evacuate your family from Boston. Do you think we would ever know the truth of what's going on there? And the reason I ask is because we've seen coverage in the uh, national news media here in the United States from ABC News and others that uh, take video cameras in saying that they're being given exclusive access to number four in the removal of the fuel rods, which is said to have begun. Uh, and, and what we see in the, the video being shared here in America is pristine, a pristine interior building. It doesn't look like a building in which the top blew off in a hydrogen explosion. The Japanese are very tidy people and they have by robot control and by human beings removed the debris from the top of building four and it does look pristine. Well, both of the pictures you're looking at are the official pictures. That's the official pictures. Uh, 
So one of them can be real, the other one can't be, right? This is not rocket scientist stuff. The building looks like that. It can't look like that. You can't rebuild it and say it's the reactor. You just simply can't. You simply can't. Well, this is our last show on YouTube. It's going to be a short one, but it looks a bit. And that's okay. Tomorrow night we're going to start streaming on Rumble. And I put multiple links in the comments for everybody so they can find it. I'll also, there's a link in the description, at the bottom of the description, you'll see a link, the link, if you're watching this later. And YouTube uh, extends my videos after 12 hours. We don't know what they're doing, but they're extended by 8 or 9 seconds. We assume they're putting software in to track people. And that has driven me insane, by the way. They've been doing that since we started up this new site. They, my comments don't show up for 12 hours. So what's going on here? I get no views on the most important subject in history. And enough is enough, right? We got to try to reach the population. We're hoping that Rumble, and I'm going to be contacting Rumble uh, over the next number of weeks and months regularly to ask them to promote me. Now, we, we might still post videos later on YouTube because YouTube is still a powerful platform, but the live streams won't be done here no more. The censorship is just too much. And if you do the same thing to me on Rumble, well, I don't know what to say. Once again, I'll put the link in to the new site so people can find it. And, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody's got mixed feelings about this, and I hear you. And I got, nobody got more mixed feelings than I do. Nobody is suffering more than I do from this, right? I'm just trying to do the right thing and reach the population and have that conversation. We can't seem to do anything on YouTube for the last six years. The censorship is is depressing to say the least but we still have to go to war every single day and so this new site means i'm gonna have to work harder not easier right on top of that and that's except i don't care about the work obviously and so i hope everybody will support me i'll be putting links a video like uploading a video Um, each night before the show with a link directly to the stream so you can find the stream. There's uh, 70 million people using Rumble a week. And uh, see how it goes. Again, right, I'm tortured I'm just trying to do the moral and ethical thing and so the work um, ethics are not going to change the show is not going to change it will look the exact same on rumble as it does here there's no it's pretty well the same thing the original starting of the show could be 30 second delay on my end because there's it's a little tricky where once I go live on my software it goes live there right away instead of waiting for me to do it on my uh, other, well, the other way that I'm used to doing it anyway. We'll figure it out. The quality is just as good. And hopefully it takes off. All I can do is try. Lord knows that's what I've been, I'm ran into the ground seven days a week. I, I got no options but to go try.
We're going to close the poll down in a moment. Japan won't let anybody individually test the tanks. And if you're a scumbag, that's a pretty good idea, I would imagine. Should Japan allow independent testing and counting of his nuclear radioactive water tanks? And I use the word counting because we counted the tanks. We only got 750. We can't find the 1,000 tanks. Now, the 1,000 tanks were all built in 2013, early 2014. They were built to manipulate you and trick you into thinking that the ocean wasn't contaminated. We'll cover more of that tomorrow night. We're going to close the poll down at 50 solid votes with 100%. It's 100%. YouTube is going to have to go censor somebody else for a change. And I'm ran, I'm ran into the ground trying to do this, and we're not getting anywhere. And thus, I'm, I'm not capable of giving up, and I'm not capable of quitting. And so I have to try my best. Um, there was only a couple of platforms, and they were very expensive besides YouTube, and we couldn't afford them, right? Well, Rumble is free, so we can afford it. And we're going to do our best and see how it goes. Now, that won't be the first time we've had gotten on other sites, right? We've done this at least three times before where we got chased off of YouTube with uh, strikes on my account where I couldn't use it for three months. So we streamed at that time on live stream for three months. But when the restrictions were lifted, we came back to YouTube, which was a mistake. But uh, it was very expensive on live stream, by the way. There is no polls on Rumble. No. It's a good point. That's it, folks. You have a great night. Great day tomorrow. I'll be posting a video tomorrow night so you can find me. And we are intending to storm Rumble. And right now I have around 12 subscribers, so it's going to be daunting to say the least. And all we're getting here is 30 people on the show. And it's so difficult to do a show every night when you only see 30 people. And that's the point, right? That's what you do it to you yeah, like this. So very uh, dishonest people in the nuclear industry, very disingenuous, and very dangerous and hateful people. Have a great night. We'll see everybody tomorrow night, hopefully, on the new show. Fuck you, YouTube, you piece of shit. I disrespect you for making me do this. And for everybody else, hugs for everybody. Have a great night, great day tomorrow. Hopefully we'll see everybody tomorrow night. I'll be posting the video with the links under the video. There is links in the description, by the way, and plenty in the comments section, but it's not going to show up in the comments section for the next 12 hours because YouTube censors me. And so in the very bottom of the description, and I'll probably put it in the comments, will be a link to my new site on Rumble. Have a great night. We'll see everybody soon enough.
Good night, YouTube. We'll see everybody tomorrow night on Rumble. Have a great night.